A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 17, beginning at verse 22. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything. Since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. <clears throat> From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence, and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St John. Glory be to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you for ever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will see me no longer, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a great day for the town of Stratford-upon-Avon, our town, granted a weekly market by King Richard I in 1196, given borough status, a corporation, a grammar school and an annual fair by King Edward VI in 1553, and the birthplace of one of the greatest of all artists, which today has an estimated population of around 28,000 people. Today is a great day for our town, because we have a new mayor in our midst, our 475th in fact, the Right Worshipful, the Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon, Councillor Tony Jackson. He takes over from Councillor Kate Rolfe, who has held this distinguished office for the last year. Tony is now the first representative of our town and continues as the councillor for the Guildhall Ward, which covers 178 postcodes and around 1,727 households. 
We've just heard him read from the book of Acts. Paul arrives in Athens and notices that among their public altars there is one dedicated to an unknown God. The good people of that great city clearly wanted to cover all possible kinds of belief and we can easily imagine the discussion at their city planning meeting. Let's dedicate an altar to a God we do not yet know, just in case. It was minuted. It was actioned. So when Paul sees the altar to an unknown God, he tells them of the God who does not occupy shrines made by human hands, but who, instead, was revealed to be present in our own humanity by Jesus, a God who lives in all of us and who makes us responsible to each other through love. Throughout the whole of human history, says Paul to the people of Athens, human beings have groped around to try and find God. Though indeed, he says, God is not far from us. In God we live and move and have our being. And he says that the poets of Athens have also tried to describe our relationship to God by saying, for we too are God's offspring. What does our poet Shakespeare say about this? We need look no further than Hamlet. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god, the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. Shakespeare knew his Bible and is putting into the mouth of the Prince of Denmark words that echo Psalm 8. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him lower than the angels to crown him with glory and worship. That word, worship, the worshipful the mayor, the worship of the worship of the town councillors who are called to volunteer, to give of their time freely to serve the people of their wards, their neighbourhoods, and who have special responsibilities for the good running of our town. What a piece of work is a mayor. What a piece of work is a town council. As a church, we try to live out the teaching, the example and the vision of Jesus, who came among us as the servant of all, and who showed us what a piece of work is a man. It's our delight and our privilege as the parish church of Stratford-upon-Avon always to welcome you, the worshipful the mayor and all of the town council, and to share with you our thanksgiving to God for your selfless public service, your vocation to serve our town. On Friday, I took up the new role as chaplain to the town council. It's a role that is not only new to me, O oh brave new world, but new in and of itself. For hundreds of years, our town council, like other town councils up and down the land, have appointed someone to the role of mayor's chaplain. But as our culture and beliefs have become more diverse, it's no longer the case that all mayors and town councils can comfortably identify with being Christian. Our own town council has other great world faiths represented among its councillors, and some councillors do not have any religious belief. But we all believe in our humanity, and we're all here for the same purpose, to listen to one another, to serve one another, and to uphold the common good. Whatever our beliefs, whatever our beliefs, we live to speak and seek the truth and to live out a vision for our community, encapsulated in Shakespeare's phrase, what a piece of work is a man. Christianity, of course, says exactly the same. And it's worth reminding ourselves that if Christianity had not taken hold of our Western culture one and a half thousand years ago, there would be no grounds on which to base what have come to be known as humanist values. There would be no shared sense in the equal value of human life. No humanism, no declaration of human rights, none of the freedoms we've come to take for granted. Before Christianity, human beings were bought and sold, enslaved and treated as objects. 
Christianity liberated us and called us to love. Christianity continues to liberate us and to call us to love. And in calling us to love, it calls us to serve. But the Christian message is also distinctive and clear. There is an even greater love for all of us than can ever be expressed through our love for each other. To follow the teachings and promises of Jesus Christ, to be a Christian, means also to believe in an eternal love, the love that saves us from the worst parts of ourselves. My new role as chaplain to the town council means that I am appointed to serve all who work for it and all who work in the town hall and all who have worked there. And I feel privileged to take up this new role because it means I can support the mayor and the town councillors in the service they give to our town and those who have served our town. To close, I'd like to reflect a little on those important words of Jesus as recorded in John's Gospel. Jesus promises to send us an advocate who will be with us forever. The advocate is the spirit of truth, Jesus says, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides in you and he will be in you. When the town council meets, our councillors speak the truth as they see it, from their own wisdom and experience, and with open hearts, honesty and trust. Jesus tells us that it is the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, leading us into all truth and understanding. The Holy Spirit is the light that makes us human and that calls us to recognise, love and serve each other. As one of my favourite writers and fellow disciple C.S. Lewis says, there's no such thing as an ordinary human being. We are extraordinary because God loves all of us. So, the right worship for the mayor and all of the town council, I look forward to working with you, to being in your midst gently and reliably. I promise to have faith in you, to pray daily for your well-being, for you to be given the strength and kindness and insight you need as you continue to serve the people of this great town. May your work and our town continue to flourish through good times and in bad. Amen.